Hello YouTube, this is Marco. Thanks so much for joining me for another video, another collection review. This time we try and build the ultimate watch collection under $10,000. So let's roll the intro and jump straight into it. So thank you so much for joining me guys. This is a collection review for Roy. Thank you so much Roy for submitting your collection for review. So taking a look at his collection from left to right, we are looking at a Timex Expedition. This version is the Indiglo on an orange NATO strap. He's got a Meisterzinger number three automatic, which is a cool, fun, kind of quirky, a little different uh, type of dress watch. Uh, although he is uh, potentially looking to part with it, which we'll get into in a minute. He's got a Tag Heuer Formula One GMT, this one with the Batman colors. I actually came very close to buying this one uh, myself. I had dwindled my choices when I had actually bought the pizza slice uh, between this and a couple other watches. But yeah, I, uh, I really love this watch. Yeah, of course, it does have the blue-black colors of the Rolex GMT, if you will, but Obviously, Rolex doesn't have a patent on those colors, nor on the GMT function. And I think this is really a gorgeous watch and one that's, you know, I think it flies over everyone's head. You know, they just dismiss it as a homage to Rolex, if you will. But I think it's so much more, such a, such a really nice looking watch and tremendous value for money overall. And last but certainly not least, he has a Polar Dial Seamaster 300 meter. This is the professional uh, obviously the newer version with the ceramic bezel, ceramic wave dial. Uh, love this watch. I think bang per buck, this is really the best watch you can get, you know, kind of under four or $5,000. I think this is really as good as it gets. So wonderful little four piece collection, uh, getting into a situation. He's a 57 year old tech manager who travels frequently for work. He'd like to keep the collection under 10,000 and have no more than five watches. Alrighty. That makes sense. Although, I will admit for this review, I don't really count the Timex Expedition. I think it's a cool watch. You definitely shouldn't get rid of it. Um, you know, it's just fun, not too serious, and a great beater watch overall. Something that you can wear if you're, I don't know, going out somewhere that uh, you don't want to wear a nice watch to, I guess. Uh, he has, yes, yeah, so he, he does want to keep the collection under uh, 10,000 and no more than five watches. He does prefer leather and rubber straps, and he says the date function is a must. Um, I understand totally the date function. I'm actually leaning more and more towards uh, date models, although I do appreciate the symmetry of a no-date watch. And I'm with you, right there with you. I do prefer, I don't know what it is, but a lot of metal bracelets outside of Rolex, I just can't do. And maybe it's just because Rolex bracelets are so good, but it just seems as though I can't uh, can't get on board with other other bracelets of other watches. So totally get that. He says he's looking for a diver GMT and a racing chronograph, and he's open to parting with the Meisterzinger, which I feel is ultimately the right thing to do. It really doesn't make sense overall uh, in this collection. I don't think you're somebody who dresses up all that frequently. I don't know how much use it gets uh, on the wrist. And so, you know, it's just not worth keeping if, of course, uh, you're not looking to, or you don't wear it all that much. And he says he prefers entry-level brands such as Omega, Tyquare, IWC, and the likes. Now, I will say this, I do tend to agree, you get a lot of value for money for those brands. That's not to say that there aren't amazing brands beyond those price points that are worth collecting, uh, but the value for money, especially pre-owned from Omega, Hoyer, IWC, Panerai, what have you, is truly excellent. And it's becoming a little underappreciated in my opinion. So getting a snapshot of his collection, again, I'm not really gonna count the Timex because it's just kind of a cool, fun uh, beater. Uh, so he has the Tag Heuer, he has the Omega, and he has the Meisterzinger. And ultimately, I do agree with him. I think I would par with the Meisterzinger. I think you have a diver, you have a GMT. I don't know if you need necessarily a dress watch, or you could try and get something that has more of a kind of dressy or appeal, but that is more practical and usable for every day. At the end of the day, I don't think that the Meisterzinger is very practical for every day. It's more of like a special watch that you wear on a special occasion. It's cool, it's fun, it's quirky. Definitely a conversation starter because obviously it just has that one hand. I like it a lot, but I don't know if, if it's really necessary in your collection. Now, you did submit to me a ton of different models of watches. And to me, the one that was the very obvious one for you to get without a question was uh, this one right here. So it's the IWC Pilot Chronograph. This is the 41 millimeter. Specifically, I'd get the blue dial. You have a black dial. You have a white dial. So I would get a blue dial. 
I like this watch a lot. I tried this on in per person. I really, really liked it. The only problem I have with it is the thickness. It is a little bit of a thick watch. It's about 14 and a half millimeters. So if you are interested in purchasing it, I would definitely recommend you check it out kind of in person and try it on and see it. But the movement is really nice. Obviously, this is the brand new kind of in-house movement. You get a day-to-day -day complication, which I think is great. Uh, obviously, you get that Flieger style uh, type chronograph. You get a chronograph in your collection, which you don't have. So it adds some us usability. And again, I think it really caps off your collection quite nicely. Now, of course, if you go into the store, you say maybe it's a little thick. It's not for you. You don't really like that one. I think adding the Le Petit Prince Mark 18 with the blue dial again, I think would be also a great addition to the collection. Either or, I don't think you can go wrong. I think I prefer the chronograph in your collection uh, just because you have kind of a three-hand watch with the date and the Seamaster, whereas the IWC feels, you know, not redundant, but, you know, a little bit more of the same, whereas adding a chronograph complication makes the collection a little more kind of unique. But yeah, I think this is a wonderful collection, super well balanced. You have a great ver versatility. You have a great variety of brands. Obviously, this is kind of one watch per brand. Great diversity of complication. Again, Diver, Chronograph, GMT. All these are really, really good watches. And I think this is a collection that you can certainly have you know, and, and enjoy really for the rest of your life. And you do hit that sub kind of $10,000 price point, right? Where the tag wear is about, you know, $1,200, 1000 to 1200 somewhere in that range. Uh, the, the Omega maybe 4,000 around, maybe 4,200. And then the IWC currently is about 6,000, I believe, pre-owned. It's still a little expensive. I'd wait before buying it now currently. Um, at these prices, it just doesn't make sense. It's still a brand new release. So, you know, I, I'd say in a couple of years, three, four years, these should be trading kind of all day under retail and you should be able to pick them up, you know, around the 5,000, maybe $5,500 mark, no problem at all. So yeah, I really like this three piece, but I, I will say this. I think that rules are good to have in a collection, you know, that sub $10,000 price category is totally understandable. You know, you get to enjoy the, the watches that you have. You don't go overboard, you know, and stretch yourself financially. But sometimes it is nice to enjoy the hobby over and above and maybe not so much follow the rules and not so much set yourself such stringent and strict rules. I think there's a lot of great watches out there to be had that are tremendous value. And, you know, you are 57. I think you can... Uh, look to ultimately enjoy some watches that are out there to be had. And the watch I would recommend as you kind of maybe enter into, I guess, another part of your life, which is, you know, as you approach closer to retirement is this watch right here. That's the grand take of the SBGM 221. I absolutely love this watch. I think it's a wonderful watch, tremendous value for money. And overall, I have to be honest, it might be a little redundant complication wise with the Tag Heuer, but it's kind of more of a dressy piece. You can definitely wear this as a dress watch. It's got that cream dial, which again, gives you another dial, another brand. So grand, this one is obviously Grand Seiko. The finishing obviously of the dial and the movement is excellent, what you would expect from Grand Seiko. And these can be had for about, I think three, 4,000 on the secondary market. So tremendous value for money. I, I think really, if you can get it for the right price, you would still be under you know, 13, $14,000 overall for your watch collection and have four really incredible watches that cover all your bases. You have your diver dress watch, you have two GMTs, you have a chronograph. I think this is really, really a spectacular collection overall if you do seek to go over that $10,000 price point. But if you don't, I think this three watch collection as well is very, very worthy for anybody's consideration. I think this is wonderful. This covers all your bases. You really don't need anything else beyond this. And overall, I really like this collection. So Roy, I hope you enjoyed the collection review. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Please be sure to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe as well. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for joining me as usual. Cheers.